In Battle Pass 2, Gaijin has changed some of the challenges to where some require playing specific modes, one of those being naval. While I think this is a very poor decision as it forces players to play modes they may not want to, it's just the reality of the second Battle Pass. In this video, I'll go over each challenge in the Battle Pass that either requires naval or is made easier with it, along with some lineups and vehicles that can make doing the challenges easier. As a quick but important side note, each task requires rank 3 or higher vehicles, so keep that in mind. First up is Sol Lucet Omnibus, which just requires playing 25 matches in each mode, including naval forces. This one is self-explanatory, just get a rank 3 vehicle and play a bunch of naval. It's best done while grinding a different task at the same time. Up next is one that's not naval specific, but is possibly easier in it, Kuya Noinor Leo. I found First Strike easier to get in naval than in other modes. Just take the closest spawn to the enemy with a high DPS ship, head directly for their spawn, and shoot the first target that comes into view. This should hopefully be a bit faster than in tanks and planes, though that might depend on what vehicles you're using, play style, things like that. Alia Iakta Est requires 40 kills using vehicles from this battle pass season. I would say that Z25, the naval reward, is also great for this. I got to play it earlier, and it's an excellent ship. Naval also tends to get more kills per match than tanks are rare, or at least in my experience playing it, so it's a very good candidate for this task. Bellum Omnium Contra Omnes requires killing 10 vehicles from other military branches, so killing 10 aircraft with tanks or ships, and then 10 tanks or ships using aircraft. For getting air kills, naval is a great choice since all ships have some form of anti-air weaponry, plus many ships having anti-air shells on their main guns, giving a lot of options to take down aircraft. For getting air to ground kills, I would recommend against naval for that same reason. Ships present a larger target than tanks, but they also have anti-air defenses while tanks don't, so it's better to just take out a plane and ground realistic for that part of the task, since you'll be facing defenseless targets. Mercury Te Salutant is also a task that's more difficult than naval. It requires getting 100 critical hits, however naval doesn't actually count critical hits against other ships, only against aircraft. It'd be better to do this one in ground forces, probably with something that has a rapid fire auto cannon to farm multiple critical hits off of a single target. Doom Spyro Sparrow requires getting 30 kills while critically damaged or on fire. This one should be incredibly easy in naval. Ships can survive fires for a long time, so if you get lit on fire, simply don't put it out and keep firing at whatever you can kill the fastest. The challenge of Antonio Nisoni is also easier in naval forces due to the mode having less players. Since lots of matches have bots that can't earn score, it's relatively easy to come in at a high place on your team due to having less competition. Next up comes the tasks that are only unlocked at certain levels of the battle pass, rather than on certain days. Up first is Citius Altius Fortius. This one requires killing enemies with very specific weapons, some of which are easy, and some of which aren't. The first is an artillery strike. Since naval uses 380mm high explosive for its artillery, it has a massive splash radius and high damage, so playing low BR coastal ships may be one of the best ways to get an artillery kill. Next comes bombs, which would indicate aircraft. It's easier to bomb defenseless tanks than ships, so I'd again recommend doing this one in tank RB. Then unguided rockets. It's possible that this can be done with anti-submarine rockets, such as the PR-35's RBU-6000 or Colin F-220's M-50 Bofors rocket, though this can't really be confirmed until the task is available. These might provide a good alternative to air launch rockets if you're struggling to hit with those, as I would say that these are harder to get into range with, but more consistent in their damage output once you do get there. Next, anti-tank guided missiles and anti-ship missiles. There's only one anti-ship missile in War Thunder, and it's on the SATA P-494, which is prohibitively expensive and takes a long time to grind. The missile also doesn't work in realistic right now, it just flies off into space, so it's better to just use an ATGM for this one. Next up, torpedoes. For this one I would recommend playing in arcade, as torpedoes are significantly faster and have infinite reloads there. Japan is also the best country to do this with. Their destroyers have the best torpedoes in the game and high numbers of them. The best way to do this task is to bring out Shimakaze and spam as many torpedoes as possible. Get enough in the water, and you're bound to hit something. You can also spawn a small and fast coastal ship, trying to get in close and drop a surprise torpedo into an enemy. You can also do the torpedo task in aircraft, in which case I would recommend targeting low battle rating destroyers without much anti-air weaponry. Last up is depth charges. This requires playing naval, and it's probably the reason lots of people clicked onto this video. There's only one ship I would recommend doing this in, the PR-123K Komsomolets, as it's the fastest tier 3 ship with depth charges. 
take it out with depth charges, and hope for a map with ample cover. Get as close to the enemy as you can, remaining in cover for as long as possible, then jump out at maximum speed and drop some depth charges directly in front of them. Keep the shortest possible depth charge activation time of 3 seconds, since there's no real point in trying to lay a 10 second trap since drop the depth charges do appear on the enemy's HUD. This task is probably going to take a while. Depth charges weren't designed to kill surface targets, so it can be a very annoying one to do. A blast, two errors of Centurions, which requires playing 10 matches in British vehicles and 10 matches in Italian vehicles. While not naval specific, since the naval trees are smaller than ground and air trees, it may be faster to grind up to rank 3 in the British and Italian trees than in the ground and air trees. And with that, it's time to look over some lineups. The main goal of this is to make a viable lineup with only rank 3 or higher vehicles that avoids fighting the battleship Black Hole, which isn't particularly easy to do due to the severe compression of naval. Some countries can't even do this, so the choices are very restrictive. For blue water ships, I would recommend the British tree for the battle classes, the Japanese tree for Akatsuki and Kako, or the Italian tree for Bartolomeo, Attilio, and Trento. I personally like the British option the most, though the Italian tree is very quick to grind up and leads to the most fleshed out rank 3 plus lineup. Destroyers have faster matches and get more done in them, which leads to a significantly faster event grind than with larger vessels, which is why I would generally recommend against going to 5.0 and up, as cruisers, paddle cruisers, and battleships will take a lot longer to grind any of the tasks. On the coastal side of things, the number one ship I'd recommend grinding to is the Russian PR-123K Komsomolets. It's practically required to do the depth charge task without going completely insane. Keep in mind, you can't buy the premium PR-123K for this either. It's a rank 2 vessel, so it can't be used for the task. Some other good coastal lineups are British 2.3, Japanese 2.3, and Italian 2.3. I would recommend the destroyers overall for the tasks, but these can do quite well alone. Also, if you have any old premium destroyers like Cowell and Haida, they actually retain their old rank 3 rating, meaning that they can be used to grind the battle pass challenges and events. Also, on another note, the naval reward for this challenge is C25, a German destroyer. I actually got to play a match in it early, which I uploaded previously. It's a great ship, has an excellent lineup at 4.3, and is a rank 3 ship so it can grind future events. I haven't been able to make a review of it yet, I'll need the ship for longer to adequately review it, but it's likely worth the 2000 gold eagles that the battle pass costs if you're interested in naval, considering just how many other things you also get out of the pass. I hope this helps, and thank you for watching.